The story of our planet is written in stone. Deep within the Earth's layers, ancient secrets lie waiting. In the Guizhou province of southwestern China such a tale began to unfold. Here, limestone deposits whisper of a time long past. A time when the seas teemed with life forms vastly different from today. This region, rich in Triassic period fossils, offered a glimpse into an ancient aquatic world. A world that existed around 240 million years ago. Imagine a time when continents were clumped together. The oceans were vast and largely unexplored by creatures like us, but they were not empty. They were home to remarkable reptiles. These were marine specialists, perfectly adapted to life beneath the waves. The discovery in Guizhou promised something extraordinary. It hinted at a creature that would challenge our understanding of prehistoric marine ecosystems. The first whispers of this animal came from local fossil hunters. The rocks of Guizhou have yielded many important fossils over the years. This particular discovery, however, was different. It pointed to an animal with a truly bizarre and spectacular body plan. The creature unveiled was named Dinocephalosaurus orientalis. The most striking feature of Dinocephalosaurus orientalis is undoubtedly its neck. It was extraordinarily long, measuring an astonishing 7.7 .7 feet. This incredible neck comprised a significant portion of its total body length, which reached about 16 feet. Imagine a reptile with a body like a torpedo, and then, extending from that body, a neck of almost serpentine proportions. This remarkable neck was made up of 32 separate vertebrae. Compare that to humans, who have just seven cervical vertebrae. The sheer number of vertebrae in Dinocephalosaurus gave its neck incredible flexibility. It could likely bend and contort its neck in ways that are hard for us to visualize. Beyond the neck, Dinocephalosaurus possessed flippered limbs. These were not designed for walking on land, instead they were perfectly adapted for navigating the water. Think of the flippers of a modern sea turtle or a seal. The limbs suggest a creature fully committed to an aquatic lifestyle. And then there were its teeth. The mouth of Dinocephalosaurus was armed with sharp, fang-like teeth. The combination of a long, flexible neck, flippered limbs, and formidable dentition painted a clear picture. The unique anatomy of Dinocephalosaurus orientalis offers compelling clues about its life. How did it hunt? Its incredibly long neck was not just for show. It was a sophisticated hunting weapon. Scientists believe it employed an ambush strategy. Imagine the creature lurking in murky waters. Its body could remain hidden, perhaps amongst rocks or marine vegetation. Only its small head at the end of that long, sinuous neck would slowly extend. It could strike with surprising speed, snatching unsuspecting fish or squid. The neck's structure with its numerous vertebrae allowed for rapid sideways strikes. The prey might not even see the main body of the predator until it was too late. This method of hunting is energy efficient. It allows the predator to conserve energy while waiting for the perfect moment. The element of surprise was its greatest ally. Dinocephalosaurus was likely a patient hunter relying on stealth and a sudden burst of speed from its neck. Its flippered limbs suggest it was a capable swimmer, but perhaps not a pursuit predator over long distances. The limbs were likely used for maneuvering, for stability, and for bursts of acceleration during an attack. Evidence found within the fossilized remains of some specimens includes fish. This confirms its diet and its role as a piscivore, a fish eater, in the marine food web of its time. Dinocephalosaurus was one of the top predators in its ecosystem. Its bizarre appearance, particularly that long neck, earned it the nickname Chinese Dragon. Section 4, Unearthing a Legend, The Path to Revelation. The story of Dinocephalosaurus orientalis's discovery is one of patience and persistence. The first incomplete fossils were found back in 2003. These initial finds were intriguing. They hinted at a new type of long-necked marine reptile, but the picture was far from complete. Paleontology is often like assembling a cosmic jigsaw puzzle. You only have a few pieces at first. You must search for more, or figure out the image from what little you have. These early fossils sparked curiosity but also presented many questions. For years, scientists worked with these fragmented remains. The extreme length of the neck was apparent, but its full structure, its connection to the body, and the animal's overall proportions were still debated. It takes time to carefully excavate, prepare, and study such delicate fossils. The major breakthrough came much more recently. Over the subsequent years, more complete specimens were unearthed. These new discoveries were crucial. They provided the missing pieces of the puzzle. The Chinese dragon was slowly taking its true shape in the minds of researchers. 
Section 5, Echoes in the Fossil Record, Comparisons with Kin When a new ancient creature is discovered, scientists immediately try to place it within the tree of life. How does Dinocephalosaurus orientalis relate to other known marine reptiles? One of its closest, though still distinct relatives is Tanistropheus hydroides. Tanistropheus was another Triassic marine reptile, also known for an incredibly long neck. For a long time Tanistropheus was the poster child for bizarre long-necked marine reptiles of this era. It too lived in the Tethys Ocean. Both Dinocephalosaurus and Tanistropheus belong to a group called Proterosaurs. This group includes various early archosauromorph reptiles, some terrestrial, some aquatic. Both had necks that were disproportionately long compared to their bodies. However, there are key differences. Tanistropheus had an even more extreme neck relative to its body size. Its neck was composed of only 13 very elongated vertebrae. In contrast, Dinocephalosaurus had 32 shorter vertebrae, making its neck more flexible, like a snake rather than stiff, like a girder. This difference in neck construction likely points to different hunting styles or ecological niches. Tanistropheus might have used its stiff neck more like a fishing rod, dipping its head into the water from the shore or shallows. Dinocephalosaurus, with its more flexible neck and flippered limbs, seems to have been a more fully aquatic hunter, using its neck for agile strikes underwater. It's a beautiful example of convergent evolution for long necks, but with divergent solutions for vertebral structure and flexibility. The Chinese dragon is its own unique marvel. Section 6. A World United by Wonder, International Scientific Endeavor The full unveiling of Dinocephalosaurus orientalis was not the work of a single individual or institution. It was a testament to the power of international collaboration. Scientists from China, the United Kingdom, the United States, and Europe all played crucial roles. This kind of global cooperation is becoming increasingly common in paleontology, and it is essential for tackling complex discoveries. Each team brings unique expertise, resources, and perspectives to the table. Researchers from the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing were central to the excavations and initial studies. Chinese paleontologists have made incredible strides in uncovering their nation's rich fossil heritage. They collaborated with experts from Scotland's National Museums, Germany's State Museum of Natural History Stuttgart, and Chicago's Field Museum. This diverse group of scientists pooled their knowledge of anatomy, fossil preparation, and evolutionary biology. Such collaborations allow for more rigorous analysis and a broader understanding of the findings. Their combined efforts led to a comprehensive publication detailing the anatomy and implications of Dinocephalosaurus. The key findings confirmed its status as an early, highly specialized marine reptile. The research highlighted its unique position among Triassic marine fauna. Science at its best transcends borders. Section 7. Windows to a Lost World, Significance of the Chinese Dragon The discovery of Dinocephalosaurus orientalis is more than just finding an old, unusual animal. It is a significant event for our understanding of life's history. It opens a new window into the marine ecosystems of the Middle Triassic period, about 240 million years ago. This was a time of recovery and diversification of life following the Permian-Triassic extinction event. That event was the most severe extinction in Earth's history. Dinocephalosaurus shows us how reptiles were evolving to fill new ecological niches in the recovering oceans. This creature, with its almost mythical appearance, pushes the boundaries of what we thought was possible for reptilian body plans. Its incredibly long and flexible neck represents a unique evolutionary experiment. It demonstrates the remarkable adaptability of life. Reptiles, which originated on land, were making bold moves back into the aquatic realm. Dinocephalosaurus is a prime example of this secondary adaptation to marine life. It showcases one of the diverse strategies these early marine reptiles employed to thrive. The detailed fossils also provide crucial information about the paleo environment of the eastern Tethys Ocean. The presence of such a specialized predator indicates a rich and complex food web. There must have been abundant fish and other small marine animals to support creatures like Dinocephalosaurus. It helps paleontologists reconstruct not just individual species but entire ancient ecosystems. Each fossil, especially one as complete and unusual as this, adds a vital piece to that grand puzzle of past life. Ultimately, the Chinese dragon reminds us of the vastness of geologic time. The Earth still holds many secrets waiting for us to find them.